Hi everyone, and today on the bench we have the typical eBay story. You buy something that's fully working and it never is. So, uh, dual channel power supply, switch on, um, let's just set a random voltage, uh, 1 amp 8 volts, switch on, just adjust my load. Right, so we're pulling 1 amp 8 volts, just using the load tester. So, channel 2, no problems, seems to be working okay. Channel 1, switched off, we'll set a voltage, 10 volts. Uh, 1.2 amps, switch on. And, as you can see it's current limiting, it's actually shorted. Oh, assume you can hear that whistling. So yeah, the output's completely shorted. In fact, let's pull that off. No load. Yep, shorted. It's running four amps uh, with nothing connected to it. So not as described. Inside of the unit, uh, this is a later revision switch, fully switch mode version. Uh, although it might actually use linear regulators when the output, I am not sure. I will have to investigate further. Um, I haven't seen anything that's let the smoke out. Obviously give me a shout if you do see anything. No, it looks in reasonable order. Well, at least physically, anyway. I don't see anything smoked. Um, interestingly, on this revision, it appears, so we've got the main switch on the front panel. Um, we've got the power. The power. So this is the display board. But additionally, the power comes from the main board to the display board, and then the uh, output jacks are part of the display board. So well, that's what we could do, is we could always... No, I'm not going to be able to control it, will I? I was going to say we could take the connector off and check for shorts on the outputs. Yeah, let's see what we can find out. This channel's uh, display board connect disconnected. Um, continuity test. So we've got a short on the outputs uh, with, the, with the board disconnected. We can just check the other channel to sh show that it shouldn't be uh, shorted idle and no short on the other channel so there is actually a short on the front panel interesting okay we are in so this is the front panel board there's quite a lot going on with this so uh, this is the channel that is the problem again let's see if we see anything with uh, signs of magic smoke I don't see anything. Uh, one thing worth noting, I can just see, um, so this is the left output, this is the right output, there's also a third output, which uh, is it even, it's almost like it is all populated actually. Yes, yeah, so there's a third output that seems to be populated on the front control panel, maybe apart from a capacitor there. Um, so this this board can be used on the triple rail version as well. Anyway, let's find out what's going on with this. There must be something shorted. Um, in fact, let's just grab the meter leads, make sure that the short is still present. Excuse me while I do this. Yep, so there's still an output short. We need to find out what that is. Oh, looks like I've found the fault already. I've just pulled one leg of this, uh, this uh, diode up as I noticed it was across the outputs. Let's see if I can do this on the camera. So you can see there is a short across that diode and if we can just get onto the output pads I'm sorry for doing this one handed there is no short on the outputs there you go bad diode what is that diode can't tell it's uh, um, 54001 should have those in stock let's pull it out and replace it it's installed I did have them in stock and you can see 
no short. So I'm going to reassemble it and get it tested. But the last thing I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to clean up the back of this board as it's got flux all over it from the factory. And I would rather it was clean. We are reassembled. I'll just do a quick test. So no current draw when it's turned on. Oh, there's, there's a meter dropping a bit. 22.05. Yeah, it's dropping off a little tiny bit when you switch it on. So it's not measuring massively accurately. Let's just connect it up and see what's going on. So we're putting out 21.8 out, 21.96 into the load tester. Yeah, it's not a million miles out. We could probably calibrate, calibrate. I can't speak today. Probably calibrate the displays a bit. There were lots of adjustment pots. So if I can get a service manual, I can probably do that. Additionally, we've got the external uh, voltage sensing terminals that gives a more accurate reading so you can't expect it to be 100% accurate especially if you put a load on it at this stage we haven't got a load but let's just try a few voltages so 35.17 is 35.3 1 1.39 1.41 so it's not a million miles out but it needs a little bit of a tweak and um, last thing we need to do let's just set a cover on it over. Stick it on. Um, we'll put a one amp. Point like one amp out. One point three eight. One amp. One point three five. One amp. And let's just whack up the current limit, and uh, we'll see if it can do the four amps that it's supposed to be able to do. There we go. Four amps. One point three eight volts. Seems to be doing that okay. Let's give it the full blast. 35 volts, 4 amps, 140 watts. It is doing that now. So it's a 280 watt power supply, 140 watts per channel. So it seems to be able to put out the 140 watts um, on that channel now. Um, so, yeah, so the only thing I need to do is adjust the uh, accuracy of the display a little bit. That seems to be working now. So thankfully, only a simple fix, but disappointing, well, not surprising though, uh, that, as usual, a working item on eBay isn't working. So, you know, that's always something to be aware of. If you can't fix stuff yourself, sometimes it's best not to buy things like this from eBay. Um, but yeah, thankfully it's turned out to be a simple fix. I hope you liked it. Thanks for watching.